Hi, I'm Lillian. Welcome back to my channel, Ink and Pages. So this year, I have gotten really into puzzles. I know it's a very exciting and high octane kind of hobby, um, but I have pretty much done one a week since the beginning of January, and it's now my favourite way to spend a weekend afternoon just sitting at my dining table doing a thousand piece puzzle. Um, and I realised as I was working through my and my family's quite large stash of puzzles, um, I realised that quite a lot of them were book or literary related. So I thought I would combine my love of books and puzzles and make a video talking uh, about these puzzles with you and my thoughts on them. And that's the whole video idea. I hope you enjoy. So the first puzzle I have to talk about is this one, The World of Jane Austen. Um, this is made by the company Lawrence King and actually quite a few of the puzzles in this video are made by them. First of all, have I read any Jane Austen? No. Um, I've seen adaptions of Pride and Prejudice, obviously. Uh, I've seen Sense Sensibility. I have seen Emma. Um, I've seen a bit of the new Persuasion adaption, but only a bit because it wasn't very good. And I've also seen the film Lady Susan, which I believe is based on the novella by Jane Austen, Love and Friendship. So on the box for this puzzle, it says that the illustrations are copyright Barry Falls, but the design is copyright Ernie Colcott. So I'm not sure who like, actually drew this or who to credit the design of this puzzle to. I would say it has a nice level of detail. Um, it's like a nice balance of being intricate and interesting but without being so detailed it makes you want to pull your hair out. Um, that is the case for a puzzle later on on this list. And it says there are 60 characters and like some great manor grand houses um, to find in this puzzle and you get a guide inside the box so you can actually do it properly so you get a lovely guide of the full illustration and on the back it has um like a breakdown of who these 60 characters are and like a little blurb about jane austen and some of her stories um so i did the puzzle then read the guide and it was unfortunately at that point i started to think that the design of this puzzle isn't very good so it is interesting but if I was told, look at this puzzle and point out Lizzie and Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, who I think are probably like her most famous characters, I wouldn't have a clue who they were. I mean, everyone in this puzzle is just standing outside a house or standing on a path and it, you cannot tell who is who or who's meant to be from what story at all. There are two exceptions to this um, where I think it's pretty obvious who characters are. So there's one little corner of the puzzle where you can see Eleanor from Sense and Sensibility being rescued from a rainstorm by Colonel Brandon. And then at the bottom of the puzzle, there's this nice little tableau um, which shows a woman like jumping off a harbour wall where everyone around her looks very shocked and someone tries to catch her. And I'm reliably informed this is a scene from Persuasion, um, which I wouldn't know because I didn't finish watching the film. But like even I, who hasn't read the book or seen the film, can tell this is a specific story beat from that novel and I think the puzzle just needed more moments where it was like really obvious and 
like a specific reference to a story instead of just another illustration of a woman standing outside a house and a man standing outside a house and a woman standing on a road and a man standing in a garden. Like it, apart from those two instances, I really couldn't tell who was who. So it was very interesting to read the guide afterwards and be like, oh, that was meant to be Emma. That was meant to be Lydia and Kitty. Um, and you know who was meant to be Lizzie and Mr. Darcy? These two. They're just standing outside a house next to her aunt and uncle and like, how are you supposed to know? How are you supposed to know? The other thing I didn't really like about this puzzle is, I don't know how to explain it, but like the tactile quality of the pieces, they were very brittle. And when you put them together, all you had to do was look at them funny and they would just detach and the puzzle would kind of disintegrate, which was very, very annoying and not what I like my puzzles to do. So yeah, hate to start off this video on a bit of a downer, but I am gonna rank this in the bottom tier of this arbitrary and truly subjective puzzle ranking I'm creating. Um, it's still a good puzzle. Eh, it's an okay puzzle. Um, I would recommend it to puzzle and Jane Austen fans alike. I just don't think it's as good as some of the, all of the other puzzles in this video. puzzle is this one called Book Club. Uh, this was made by a company called Gallison and the actual illustration is done by Carolyn Suzuki. I really really like the design and the artwork of this puzzle and um, I think it's very like interesting and busy but without being too obviously complex. Um, I love the bright colours, it looks like there's a lot of them but actually there is only like one shade of red used and one shade of dark blue and one shade of light blue and one shade of green and one shade of brown etc. There's also lots of fun little details like uh, the fabric of people's clothing and some of the patterns in the negative space. Um, and there's not many pieces which are like all just one colour, which you'd think would make this puzzle easy. No, it is deceptively difficult because once you've done the pieces around the edge, there's like no obvious place to start. It's not like um, a landscape puzzle and you can separate out all the pieces which are the sky and then do that chunk of the puzzle. No, this puzzle is very bitty. What I did was sort by colour, so like took out all the pieces which were like majority red and majority yellow and then kind of wing it from there. Um, it did work, but it took an age. So watch out. This is a sneaky one, I would say. But the fun thing about this puzzle is uh, the names of some of the books are very like silly and punny references to real books. So you have a cat reading The Great Catsby, you have someone reading Henry Snotter, um, there's Planet of the Grapes, and I think my favourite was there are two guys who are sharing a book on love triangles, which I thought was kind of jokes. 
The pieces, um, they did feel a little bit thin, but they fit together. And that is, that is what we want. Unlike the Jane Austen puzzle, they fit well together and we're not constantly falling apart. So I am going to rank this um, as a solid good puzzle. Next up, we have The World of Shakespeare. Um, this is also a Stephen Lawrence puzzle. It's also in the same um, like series as the World of Jane Austen puzzle. Um, although this has a different illustrator, this one was Adam Simpson. So have I read any Shakespeare? Yes. I actually have. Um, my first experience with Shakespeare was in year three, we read King Richard III, which maybe in hindsight was quite intense for seven and eight year olds, um, but I loved it. I really, really loved it. And I remember we went on a school trip to the Globe to see the play and I was so irritated because they made us leave even before we got to the interval and I was like incensed with rage. I was like, what is the point of taking us to this play? And then we don't even get to see half of it um but luckily i was able to go back with my family um and see the whole thing and i remember feeling very very smug because i was sitting there and i knew exactly what was going on and like what everything meant and what was happening and i was able to explain it to them as it happened also in year three we then did a bit of macbeth um even though i don't think i read the entire play until later like maybe my GCSEs um, but Macbeth was and still is I think my favourite Shakespeare play of all time um, and then also in school we did Romeo and Juliet which I feel like everyone in the country has read uh, and then later uh, for my AS English Literature I had to do King Lear which was okay um, and I can also see on my Goodreads I've marked Twelfth Night as read I do not remember reading that. However, I did have um, two Shakespeare books by Marcia Williams, which were like cartoon retellings of the plot of several Shakespeare plays. Um, and I loved them as a kid and I still have them on this bookshelf there. Um, so I think overall I can say, yes, I know my Shakespeare. So the design of this puzzle is by Adam Simpson. And I think again, it walks that line really well of being complex enough to be interesting, without being too impossibly difficult. However, some parts of this puzzle were actually quite difficult. Um, it is, you know, it, it's a puzzle of London and there are a lot of buildings and like trying to find the right pieces to do the windows and the walls and the roofs of these buildings was actually quite difficult. Um, there's also a few areas in the puzzle where it's like shaded, I think, to give the puzzle some depth but that makes some of the pieces just look kind of murky and you can't really see the detail on them. So, so some parts were a little bit hard. However, I loved how many Shakespeare references there were crammed into this puzzle. You've got everything. You've got the three witches from Beth, like 
brewing, doing magic potions and spells. Um, you've got Shakespeare himself standing by the Glow Theatre watching a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. You've got Romeo wooing Juliet in her tower um, as Tybalt and Mercutio fight below. Also very close is King Lear and his three daughters. You've also got Hamlet uh, with the, the famous skull by Ophelia and his father's ghost. And there's just so many references. Admittedly, most of them are from like his bigger, most famous plays. Um, but I think the puzzle makes up for that because it also has quite a few like real life people and places in it. Um, so you can see Queen Elizabeth I on a boat on the Thames. Uh, you can also see Sir Francis Drake on his ship, the Golden Hind. There's the Globe Theatre, obviously, but there's also the Tower of London and London Bridge, severed heads and all. So for me, this puzzle is just a treat to complete. It's so much fun. And so I think it belongs solidly in the great tier. This next puzzle is by a company called Happy Place. It is called Classics and the design was by Harriet Thomas Bush. Uh, and as you can see, this shows 37 uh, book spines belonging to classic or modern classic books. So I recognize a couple of the like different editions and designs. These are all real editions. Um, I know a couple of them are the cloth bound classics. I don't recognise the others. I think though, if you are someone who is more up to date on book designs and maybe you're someone who likes collecting all the specific editions of books and like completing the series and that kind of thing, maybe more of these will look familiar to you. Um, that wasn't the case for me. Again, I really like the level of detail in this. Um, I think I'm just quite good at picking puzzles with the right level of detail, usually. Um, the one thing that lets this puzzle down is that it has the same book in it, twice, and quite close together. It has two copies of Sanderton by Jane Austen in exactly the same edition. Uh, interestingly, one of them is drawn as like lime green with gray details, and the other one is lime green with more turquoisey details. I have no idea how this made it into the final design of the puzzle without anyone realizing, um, but yeah, that is, that is, I think, the only downside of this puzzle. Of the 37 books, well, really 36 books in this puzzle, I have read 10 of them, um, which is actually a higher number than I was expecting because I don't really like old books or classics or even most modern classics, actually, having said that. Um, and I don't feel the urge at all to read the other books in this puzzle that I have not read. I will say this is probably the easiest puzzle out of all of the ones in this video. Um, it definitely took me the least amount of time because all you need to do is divide the puzzle pieces by the book and then you can literally just go one book at a time and do it pretty easily. I managed to do it in one sitting. The pieces themselves were kind of uh, like funkier than other puzzle pieces, I think. They kind of had like a more interesting, jaunty feeling to them. I feel like they were slightly misshapen and like not as regular as other puzzle pieces, which I really liked. Um, and again, they did all fit together nicely and not fall apart. And so overall, this is just a very fun, satisfying kind of puzzle. Um, and I think it is a, a good puzzle.
we have The World of Agatha Christie. This is another one in the series by uh, Lawrence King Puzzles. This design was done by Ilya Milstein and it shows uh, Agatha Christie surrounded by references to her life and her stories. I absolutely adore this puzzle and spoiler alert, it is my favourite puzzle in this entire video. I love the design of this. I love the colours and the patterns from like the pattern in the rug to the Egyptian sarcophagus that's in the corner to the folds of the yellow curtains. I just love all of it. I've done this puzzle several times now and I have just as much fun every single time. I have read uh, only one Agatha Christie book, actually. I have read uh, Peril at End House. However, I have watched all of Marple multiple times. I've seen a lot of Poirot as well. Uh, I've seen, you know, a load of adaptions of her stories. Like it feels like one comes out pretty much every year at this point. Um, I've also seen The Mousetrap in London and I have also seen the best episode of Doctor Who ever, uh, The Unicorn and the Wasp, which of course features Agatha Christie herself. So even though I've only read the one book, I think it's safe to say I have absorbed a lot of Agatha Christie and her stories into my brain over the years. So this also has um, an insert with the design on one side and like a guide on the other to all the references. It says there are 90 references uh, within this puzzle. And I would say yes, kind of, but I would argue that some are more obvious than others. So like the sign to the pale horse in, that's an obvious reference. The statues of Marple and Poirot, those are obvious references. I don't think we can say that the basket of apples that appears in the puzzle is a reference to her fictional famous uh, novelist, Ariadne Oliver, because Ariadne supposedly loves apples. I think that's a bit of a stretch. I think it might just be a basket of apples. But there are a load of other references too, um, like the Orient Express itself. Uh, there are several weapons scattered throughout the puzzle, like this vial of poison. Um, and there's also a mirror cracked side to side. I have such a soft spot for this puzzle and for the murder mystery genre in general that I have to put this in the highest tier. I just love it and I'm not sorry. This puzzle is The World of Sherlock Holmes, uh, another one in the series. This one is designed by Doug John Miller. And oh my fucking God, this was so difficult. I have never done a more frustrating puzzle than this. And I've done a puzzle of the London Underground map in which, no lie, a quarter of the pieces were just plain white. This is so annoyingly detailed that about a third of the pieces are just different fucking sections of green roofs. I cannot stress enough how much time I wasted looking at every little corner of every rooftop and every wall and every window and every brick in Victorian London to get this puzzle done. 
it's so much harder than it looks and it did make me want to pull my hair out. Have I read any Sherlock Holmes? Actually, yes. Um, I do own a massive book, which is uh, every single Sherlock Holmes story in one. Uh, I think I got it for Christmas when I was 12 and I have read some of it. I've read a few of the shorter stories and like maybe one or two of the novels but I don't remember any of them. I won't lie to you. My brain has been mostly uh, overwritten by like modern adaptions and retellings of the Sherlock Holmes stories. And so I don't even know what I've forgotten. So there are a load of references to those forgotten Sherlock Holmes stories in this puzzle. Um, you've got the Hand of the Baskervilles, you've got him fighting Moriarty on the Reichenbach Falls, um, you've even got, of course, 221B Baker Street right at the middle of the puzzle, which is pretty cool. There are also quite a few real world people depicted here. Um, so you've got Arthur Conan Doyle himself, uh, you've got some of his contemporaries like J.M. Barry, who wrote Peter Pan, and you've got Edgar Allan Poe just standing on Westminster Bridge for some reason. Uh, you've also got the even the Prime minister at the time, William Gladstone, standing outside the Houses of Parliament. I do think that for a design this chock-a-block with irritating detail, um, it could have been more filled with uh, Sherlock Holmes references. Although having said that, maybe it was and they just didn't have enough space on the guide to point out every actual reference and I, because I don't remember any of the stories I read, just didn't notice. So maybe I'm the problem. But because this puzzle was overall a more frustrating than enjoyable experience, I am going to have to put this in the bottom tier of this ranking. And finally, we have Mayhem in the Library. Uh, this puzzle is made by Big Potato Games and the design is by Bex Barnett. And it shows a library full of ridiculous people and things um, which reference different book titles. So honestly, um, I don't love the cartoony style of this puzzle as much as some of the other puzzle illustrations. However, I have to give it props because literally everything in this puzzle is relevant. There is no filler. Everything you see is relevant and interesting and part of the point of the puzzle's design. So after you finish this, um, you have to look at the guide and then uh, you can write down, I have written on this, you just can't really tell because it's in pencil, but you can write down your guesses of which 101 books are being referenced. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I had a go at guessing maybe like half to two thirds of them. And then I got my mum and dad to help me guess the rest. And together we got maybe 85 to 90% of them. Um, and then there's a QR code on the guide, which takes you to the website and you can see the correct answers and see how many you got. It was really, really fun guessing. Um, I'll show you a couple of my favorites. So I got some of them pretty quickly, like 1984. There was also War and Peace, which I got quite quickly, and also Frankenstein, which I thought was very clever. And then once we looked at the answers, I mean, there were some that were just books I'd never heard of. So I was ne never gonna get them. I was never gonna get Mill on the Floss or The Silent American because I did not know those books existed. And then some of them we didn't get, but were so obvious in hindsight that like, I love it and hate it at the same time. So one, I'll show you, three boys running, what book did they represent? The Dictionary. Dictionary. I love it, I hate it. It infuriates me, but I deeply appreciate the commitment to the pun. 
The puzzle pieces had like a slightly plasticky quality to them, which I didn't love, um, but they still fit together fine. And I also liked how they were kind of weirdly shaped. Um, I don't know what the technical term for this is, but when you picture a puzzle piece, it has like two knobbles that stick out and then two indents where another puzzle piece's knobble fits in. Um, this puzzle had quite a few pieces with four indents and no novels and I've never seen that before and I just thought it was like a little fun quirky element to this puzzle. The first time I did this puzzle I would have said it was a solid good but second time around I, I appreciate it for what it truly is. Um, so I'm gonna put this in the great tier. So those are the seven bookish literary puzzles I own. Um, I had a lot of fun making this video and I would like to make more content about bookish puzzles in the future. I actually did buy another puzzle uh, a couple of days ago, which is uh, The World of Dracula. So I thought it might be fun to do that puzzle while like re-listening to the audiobook and seeing if I can get all the references in the puzzle. I think that could be a fun time. But thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.